The sort of consensus view, which seems to me plausible, is that the developed world is going to recover higher growth rates. So going back to somewhat more normal growth rates. So the basic perspective is, is, is optimistic. Finally, there are some big downside risks in the world. Um, uh, one question certainly is what happens in the Eurozone and how far the Eurozone has really achieved an adjustment that will be durable, on which I think there's a lot of doubt that affects Spain. But if I were asked how far is Spain from a full recovery, then you have to ask yourself, well, what does full recovery mean for Spain? If it means getting back to the pre-crisis growth rate, which is more than 3% a year, well, that's clearly not there yet. That could happen in the next two or three years, four years. I think it's unlikely, but it could happen. If I mean by that getting back to the pre-crisis rate of unemployment, that's not going to happen if it happens at all until the 2020. So um, for Spain, the costs of this crisis are obviously enormous and they are not going to disappear possibly ever. It's a, it'll be an event that has an enduring mark on the Spanish economy. Um, and I think there's a real risk that the recovery will be very slow in terms of GDP and in terms of employment. And for most Spanish people, it's not going to feel like much of a crisis, sorry, much of a recovery um, for a long time. If Spain had not joined the Euro and it had been well run, interest rates in Spain would have been higher there would have been probably a bigger appreciation of the real exchange rate and the current account deficit might have been as big but the construction boom would have been much smaller and when the crisis hit the currency would have fallen maybe 30 40 percent uh, the construction boom would have been smaller the adjustment externally would have been much easier and the fiscal austerity would not have needed to be so sharp